um, or since we're celebrating Earth Day, um, I thought I would start with um, a little bit of history. So um, let's see if I can make this work. So um, in uh, 1969, there was a um, huge oil spill from an offshore um, oil rig. Um, so if you're on, on a computer, you should now see a poll. Um, so answer, if you know the answer or guess, it's your best guess. Okay, um, those are all places that oil has spilled, um, but it was actually off the coast of Santa Barbara. Um, and um, more than 3 million gallons of oil was spilled, um, which killed more than 10,000 seabirds and mammals like dolphins and seals. Um, and seeing the damage um, from an airplane um, flying um, over, over the oil spill um, inspired the uh, first chair of Earth Day to organize Earth Day. So this is going to be our second poll. See who knows who is the first chair of Earth Day who flew over the Santa Barbara oil spill. I think one more vote, maybe. All right, cool. Um, folks have taken environmental studies history. Um, Robert Redford was a good guess. I'm glad nobody guessed Nixon. Um, <laughs> he was the president. Um, but um, uh, Senator Gaylord Nelson um, was the first chair of, um, of Earth Day. Um, and the first Earth Day in 1970 had more than 20 million uh, participants across the country. And um, as a result of, um, of all of the organizing that happened, not just on Earth Day, but around it, um, the, the, um, we made an incredible amount of progress in the early 70s. So establishing the um, Environmental Protection Agency, the EPA, passing the National Environmental Policy Act, or NEPA, um, the Clean Water Act and the Clean Air Act. Um, and since then, more Americans have had um, access to and enjoy um, and value clean air and clean water. Um, oh, that is the, um, the footage, or that, not, that's not footage, that is a map of um, where the oil, um, the uh, oil on the surface um, extended to uh, outside of Santa Barbara. So you can see where flying over that um, in an airplane would be pretty, um, pretty intense. Um, so 50 years later, um, as I think folks know, we face some of the same challenges and some new challenges. Unfortunately, the current administration in DC is doing everything they can to roll back and weaken those protections from the 1970s and the threat of climate change is accelerating daily. And the fossil fuel companies, oil, gas, and coal have a huge stake in maintaining the status quo. They've spent a ton of money convincing the public that the science isn't definitive or that the alternatives to burning fossil fuels aren't viable. And they've also spent a lot of money to influence elections. So the good news is that people and many of our leaders are concerned about climate change and committed to acting. So recent polls found that a strong majority of Americans, about eight in 10, say that human activity is fueling climate change and roughly half believe action is urgently needed within the next decade. So to counter the influence of fossil fuel money, Environment America is working with that majority of Americans, building a network of people in states across the country who have the knowledge, the skills, and the will to hold their elected representatives in Washington accountable on climate change. 
And that network of people can make a difference now and beyond the next election. So whoever wins in November, the price of climate progress in Washington is and will remain constant vigilance and consistent action. And together, our organizers and volunteers can sustain that kind of support in the form of grassroots action, opinion media, public events, and earned media. Um, and that can ulti ultimately make the difference on climate change. But right, right now, the COVID-19 crisis is demanding the attention of our elected officials. But even while this crisis is at the top of everyone's minds, the EPA under President Trump and Administrator Andrew Wheeler is rolling back standards for pollution from vehicles and mercury pollution from power plants. Um, and when this crisis subsides, if we return to business as usual, burning more and more fossil fuels, the climate crisis will worsen and accelerate. Um, so it's up to all of us and all of the people we're going to get involved this week to hold our elected representatives in Washington uh, accountable um, and swing momentum away from denial and, um, and gridlock. So what are we going to do this week? Um, so we've challenged um, you and a bunch of other people to take um, 50 uh, actions during Earth Week. Um, this is a choose your own adventure um, week, but we're also providing tools and trainings for a lot of actions. So there are two actions that you're on your own for. Um, one is talking to friends and family about climate change and asking them to take action. Um, you're, you know, obviously <laughs> responsible for that yourself. Um, and then taking trips to run errands where you walk or bike instead of driving, um, that's also up to you um, to uh, um, inflate your bike tires or, you know, lace up your shoes and, and uh, head out there. Um, we will be emailing out how to's and running trainings uh, twice a day that will cover some of the other actions. So, um, We'll be um, holding uh, trainings and um, kind of group actions for online petitions, photo petitions, calling elected officials, and posting on social media. Um, and we've added an action that wasn't actually on the original list, um, but is incredibly important, which is writing letters to the editor. And we'll be doing um, uh, trainings on that on Tuesday. Um, and then quite a few folks signed up for participating in video meetings with elected officials offices about climate solutions. Um, those are in the works. So as you might guess, a lot of our elected officials are very um, focused on COVID-19, but we're working on setting up those um, virtual meetings throughout the spring. Um, and we'll make sure that anyone who um, signed up to take those actions has an opportunity to get involved in one or more than one. Um, I also wanted to highlight the two webinars that Environment Colorado is um, hosting this week. So um, both on, uh, on Earth Day, um, the Earth Day birthday celebration is um, uh, a little bit of a um, sort of online festival feel um, appropriate for kids of all ages. And then um, that evening, a um, college campus focused webinar on um, getting your campus uh, to 100% renewable energy or um, making sure that your campus uh, stays on track um, to getting to 100% renewable energy and, and how you can work with your campus. Um, so, um, and then how to stay involved this week, we'll be posting the information about all of our events and activities to the Environment Colorado Facebook page um, you can also get in touch with um, one of our two organizers, and um, you can also reference the Earth Day um, or Earth Week Overview PDF and um, let us know if you need that emailed again. Um, and so now for the fun part, um, I'm going to turn things over to Eric to talk about our um, Earth Week scavenger hunt and prizes. Eric, you're, there you go. Yeah, thanks, Len. Um, here, let me just pull it up real quick. So, yeah, we've got a really cool thing going on. It's going to be a scavenger hunt, obviously, and it's going to be like a really, um, you get basically, it's going to be a photo scavenger hunt where you go out into your community or do activities in, in, in your own house or, or home, and uh, you'll basically take pictures of those and uh, send them to uh, me or Len or Matt. Um, and we'll uh, give you prizes. So basically the rules are just 
take a photo of anything on the any of the activities or things in the list. So you could dress up as your favorite um, environmentalist, like um, John Muir or uh, Greta Thunberg, or like however many other environmentalists there there are. There's plenty. Captain Planet, what have you. Um, you can also like make reusable bags, like plant a, uh, uh, plant a plant in your garden. And there's a whole list of activities that we can, uh, that are eligible for points. And so you will text fo the photos of these uh, to a number, which are, is on the form that we'll send to you. Uh, or you can use them, you can submit them via Google form, or just you can email Len, which that will also be provided to you. Some things can get bonus points. So if you do dress up as an environmentalist and uh, whoever, is has the best or most robust costume will award extra points too uh, or if you're uh, taking photos outside of like some uh, plants or animals in your neighborhood extra points can be uh, added for like species species identification things like that it's all on the list as well as the corresponding points um, and then when when submitting photos please include the corresponding item number and so you'll see on the list there's about 30 uh, different things you can get points for just when you text or submit the photo just be like the number on that list like you go to like a, a fast food restaurant or like a Chinese food restaurant and get like the number four um, and then just of course be safe and have fun some of them are identifying animals so obviously don't get too close to animals because that's not cool um, observe from a safe distance and obviously um, do all these things from a safe distance from others. Um, thankfully, being outside, uh, you can have plenty of space to run around and look for cool things. Um, so yeah, be safe, have fun, and here's some of our prizes. So we've got our Less Plastic is Fantastic reusable mug. We've got our uh, Be Friendly Garden Kit, um, which is really cool. That's the one that I I want to go for. We also have Environment Colorado uh, No Bees No Food uh, shirts and we also have these really cool reusable bags which one is really cute it's you really ought to reuse your bag and then uh, the other one is a slogan from our um, Wildlife Over Waste campaign which is nothing we use for five minutes should pollute our oceans and rivers for centuries. So that's what we got. Um, you should we'll share out all the instructions and all, all the uh, uh, point uh, worthy things and you guys can get